Like all Bush boys, George was sent to prep school at Phillips Academy in Massachusetts. Unable to match his father's exploits on the baseball diamond, Bush concentrated on his social skills, becoming head cheerleader. Upon graduation, he followed two previous generations of Bushes to Yale University. He doesn't have his father's history, he doesn't have his father's uh, academic or athletic skills. So he becomes a student of people, a student of other uh, kids. Well, he is a people person. He was friendly, warm, humorous, uh, but had this fantastic, genuine interest in people. Bush spent most of his time at Yale drinking, socializing, and studiously ignoring the growing discord in the country over the war in Vietnam. But by 1968, Bush's senior year, he could no longer hold the outside world at bay. Bush knew that with commencement, he would lose the academic deferment that had shielded him from the draft. In his heart of hearts, he did not want to go to Vietnam. But he knew damn well that his father's uh, next step had been to join the military and then become a war hero. To avoid combat in Vietnam, Bush joined the 147th Texas Air National Guard, along with other sons of wealthy and well-connected Texans. Though Bush proved an able pilot, he was never tested in battle. The 147th, it was said, would only see action if Oklahoma decided to invade Texas. Some people uh, derisively called it a champagne unit. Certainly Bush uh, had help getting into the National Guard. It was uh, a matter of privilege and access. Decades later, questions would surface whether Bush had pulled strings to join the 147th and whether he left before fulfilling his full term. But in 1970, he was honorably discharged, a fighter pilot who had never seen combat. 